Beyond. It's Monday the 26th of April and it's time for our collective worship. Now in the Bible, when Jesus wanted to teach people something important, he would often use what is called a parable. A parable. A parable is a story which is made up but which contains a really important message. And one of the most famous parables that Jesus taught is found in the Bible in the book of Luke. And it goes like this. There was a man who had two sons. And the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of money that I should get when you die. And so the man divided all of his money between his two sons. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all that he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he wasted all of the money in reckless living. That means he didn't try to buy the right things. He just spent it all on parties and food and drink and expensive clothes and jewellery and didn't think about whether it was a sensible thing to be buying or not. When he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in the country. A famine is when a country starts to run out of food and there's not enough food for everybody to eat what they need to. And the younger son began to grow hungry and in need. So he went and hired himself out to be a servant to one of the citizens of the country who sent him into the fields to feed his pigs. And this bit is a little bit disgusting. The younger son was so hungry that he was desperate to eat the food that he was giving the pigs. No one gave him anything to help. Now, if Jesus stopped the story there, I think the message would be really clear. If you waste all your money and make unwise and silly decisions, then you will get what you deserve, which is things will not go well for you. And when he asked his father for that money, that's money that he should have got when his father eventually died when he was older. But he was saying to his father, I would rather have the money than have you. I'd rather have the money and go. So maybe the message is, if you are greedy or selfish, then eventually bad things will happen to you. Now there's a bit of that. That sounds quite sensible, isn't there? When I'm watching SpongeBob SquarePants, which I like to do on occasion, there's always a part of me that is feeling happy when Plankton, the baddie, the villain of the, of the cartoon, when his schemes and plans to steal the Krabby Patty formula have gone wrong and something terrible happens to him. He gets chased by one of his inventions or he ends up getting uh, squashed and trodden on by another character. And because that's a cartoon, we can find that funny. But Jesus doesn't finish the story there. There's more. Which means Jesus's message hasn't come yet. Let's see if we can work out the, the message that Jesus wanted to share. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's servants have more than enough bread? But I'm dying here of hunger. I know. I will go back to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against you. 
I'm no longer worthy to be your son. Instead, treat me like a slave. He thought that if he went back to his father and he said, I will just be a slave, then at least he would have enough food. And so he got up and he went back to his home. But while he was still a long way away, his father saw him coming in the distance. And he was filled with love and compassion for his son. And he ran and he hugged him and he kissed him. And he ordered that a huge party be thrown in his son's honour. And he said, my son was lost and now he's found. My son could have been dead and now he's alive and he's back. Now that's a really happy ending to the story. But the boy didn't deserve to come back and have a party, did he? So what was Jesus trying to say? I think he was trying to say that even though we all make mistakes. If we recognise that we've done it and we are honest, then we can be forgiven and we can be welcomed back. I've got some news for you, St John's. At some point this week, every single one of you will make a mistake. That might be a learning mistake. That might be a behaviour mistake. That might be a mistake with your friends. Maybe you will say something unkind that you don't mean and you'll feel terrible about it. What this story shows is that if you are in a true family and you admit when you've been wrong and you say that you're sorry, you can be welcomed back into that family. And that's true in St John's. I've got a poster in my classroom which says that mistakes are expected, which means that we know mistakes will happen. They are respected, which means that we're not horrible to each other for making mistakes. And they are corrected, which means we work together as a team to fix our mistakes and to get back to being that successful, happy, learning family that we know St John's is. So when you go back to your classroom for the last couple of minutes of our collective worship, I would like you to think about a time that you have made a mistake. You don't have to share that with anybody. But what I want to tell you is that in St John's, mistakes are not the end of the story. I know that this week will be really successful for our St John's family, even though mistakes are going to happen. So I'm going to say a prayer for us to help us to learn the message of this story and to be a great team at St John's. So could you please put your hands together and close your eyes. And if you agree with my words, then you can say Amen at the end. Let's go. Dear God, thank you for this amazing message that we don't always get what we deserve. And when we make mistakes, we can come back into the family. Help us to be honest when we make mistakes in our classes and in our school to learn from them and to forgive others when they do the same. Thank you for our amazing team. And we ask for a wonderful week of learning and enjoying school together. Amen. Have a great week, St John's, and I will hopefully see as many of you as I can around school in the next few days. Bye for now.